Well, I've come down to uh, Pondwood Fishery just to give it a go. I want to try and catch a catfish if I can. Might be a chance for carp off the top. Um, I've got some uh, bread crust and a wagler float, which I'm going to be using if I can. It's late, it's about half past three, so it's a lot later than I thought I'd start. But I'm going to stay this time. I've never fished here where it's actually physically dark, I don't think. I've done, certainly never done a night trip here. So I'm going to hang on there and see what I can do. And I'm going to put, hopefully, something a bit different on the end. And we'll see if the catfish like it. I might blank. It's a risk. It's an experiment. I don't believe I've ever used these before uh, for catfish. But I figure it's worth a shout. Oh, and I've got a different type of float somebody sent me. Um, that lights up on impact with the water, so we give it a go. At the moment I've got one bait out, I'm probably just going to fish one catfish bait at the bottom and just throw around on the surface and see if I can't do the old save the blank business. That's my first beep, which is probably, you can see down there, leaves on the trees. I've got a long drop on the bobbin, I've got it on a back wind there, um, and, and that's what I'm going to be doing, just waiting. This guy's over fishing a favourite swim in the corner there. But I'm quite fancy with the wind off my back, just getting out here a little bit for um, might be might be a carp on the top. Also going to have a legendary cook up, hopefully. But first, I might have to go and get the umbrella and just uh, pin it down because there's a bit of wind coming from the back. Oh, there's a carp there now. You guys won't see a little ring there, but it's going to be a bit breezy. It's clouding over. It's not a bad thing because it's been hot. So setup is this, guys. I've had a little fish here, I must admit, but. There's a bit more breeze coming through, which is sort of gratefully accepted with the temperatures. I've got a waggler float here. It's cool. I think it's a drift beetle or wind beetle or something like that. It's got quite a big top to it. I've got it shotted down to about there. And you can see the distance I've got. I've got it locked either side. I said drop in a shot. There, yeah, set that up. I've got it locked either side. And uh, that's a problem I do find is when you've got heavy line, is getting smaller shot on it. Like we've got 18, 20 pound line, which I'm fishing. Let me just get this shot on there. It's quite thick, the diameter of the line. And then I've got my hook, barbless hook, and a cube of bread. Now I've had nothing yet, but I think maybe later on there might be something coming, but I might have to go this side, cast this side of the tree to get it out. I'm gonna try one this side anyway and you toss it in the air look high up in the air and i've got quite a good distance with that but if you if you go to cast it very hard you'll probably find the bread comes off i'm just about in the zone there i've got no buzzer on this side but i've got the the back wind on the reel just in case i'm sat pretty well as, as close as i can to pick it up and i i can see the crust out there but although i can see the crust which is about that far from the float. I'm not going to strike if I see any movement around the crust itself. I've got to wait till that float goes under. So we'll see what happens. At the moment, nothing on the catfish bait. I would say it's early doors, but it's not. The activity has slowed down a little bit as that sun's gone in, but I'm hoping it will come back a little bit on, say, six, seven o'clock in the evening. I have to say, here on this pond, on the, what I call the main lake, I've never seen a lot of carp, or had any carp, really close. I've had one decent carp, big one, I think it was about 16 pounds on one of our films. Just seeing it cruise along and put a sinking bread flake in front of it, it took it. I'm out there, near, there's a fish near me then, that's just had a look at it. I'm going to just tight, give me a second to tighten up. What I want to do is just tighten up and straighten the crust away from the float a bit. Bear with me. what happens very often is the wind will drift the crust towards you, towards a float, and you don't want it sort of too tight. Yeah, if you want to put any uh, extra bits on, you can also use the middle of the bread, and you can take a pretty good chunk like that and fold it around the hook, but just squeeze it around the, the actual eye of the hook. If you just damp it once, just take a bit of water and then cast it out, it will sink, but it'll only sink, say, that much, whatever the depth is you've got from the float to the hook. So that's another way when fish are cruising near the surface. The other problem you do get is uh, 
a wind belly in the line because the float is going to be dragging slower than the line which is floating on the surface so you get a big belly in it so you have to be careful when you pick up to mend that belly to a straight line that you don't actually pull the float out of position but I feel if I could get there use that bit of breeze and cast out a little bit farther I think I've got more chance out there I finally got one hooked up off the uh, Wagner float on the surface and I'm going to get him or not I've been taken very uh, strangely I don't know what size it is, I thought it was about six pounds before, even less. I might actually have to net him up on this side of this tree. There's like a common carp. Got the skunk out of the boat and I still got the chance of a catfish. So people, we just sat uh, one carp, I'm going to beep then, uh, just the one carp, very 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 tricky off the top, it seems to you know, just be barely barely nipping at it, but listen I've got one, so I'll put the bolly up here because it's going to uh, pick up a little bit with the wind, and I want to have a cook up, and this time I'm going to make myself wait for this, ham omelette, ham and cheese omelette, together with sauté potatoes, followed by a red wine. You guys think I'm joking. Don't worry, it's bound to be something that I've forgotten. Frying pan or something. Oh no, I've got frying pans. Of course, if I get this set up, pretty well guaranteed to get a catfish run. So while they're cooking, I've got the two eggs in here, giving them a damn good thrashing. And my mates, those catfish ones haven't kicked off to annoy me. There we go. Should have salt and pepper, I know, but I haven't. These are going to be turning. So into the omelette mix, we already have, prepared earlier by the good lady. Ham and cheese. This is one I haven't done before, wasn't it? Cooking like this with two burners on the go. Gonna mix those up. You can put salt and pepper in there, you can put other stuff, savouries, and make what you want with omelets, they're dead easy to make and they're fast. Oh, a little beep here guys. Yeah, it's just a liner I think by the... Uh, I've put the other catfish on slightly left so I'm going to pick up liners from the carp like this moving through the swim. Pan number two. Always difficult trying to get a 
level playing field here. I don't actually, I don't actually like this one to be honest. I like the low one there much better. These chips are coming along quite, uh, quite nicely. And the omelette shouldn't take too long. Very quiet on the catfish front. I've had one catfish bite, but he's dropped it. So here we go. Tomato would have been nice with that. But you can't have everything. Look at those chips, people. Oh, wait till this pan goes over. And the sun's gone down, so I fully expect, fully expect to at least salvage one catfish out of this. I was going to stay all night. I was going to do an all-nighter, and I thought, I don't know, it can be quite noisy, you know, uh, flight paths and stuff, and the motorway. So I thought, I'm not sure on this. And of course you've got to see how they feed, what are they biting like. Not that many angles. Oh, that omelette smells good. Needed salt and pepper though. Here's the sun just about to go, uh, about another 20, 30 minutes to be going down. I just want to get the cooking out of the way now. As I say, I've not fished here in the dark uh, for catfish, I've no idea. It's a local angler who can tell me it's either good or it's not. But um, I'm certainly in it to win it for the food. Not only, not only getting done, getting burnt. <laughs> Tune those down if not off. Just there. I've turned this off, but what I'm going to do because there's heat there, put my billy can on the top there so that it uh, is ready because it's almost not a million miles away from being done. Yeah, not done a bad job there. Lovely. Mm. Pay for a clean. I think that's done, guys. Then we go. Turn this giddy off to cool. Let's put that on there to keep warm. This goes over there. On go the chips. Check the gas is off. Have the knife and fork. Look at that. Omelette chips. Mr. Ketchup. I've got the red wine. Cheers. <laughs> Bad mistake was missing the ketchup. Omelette's good. Salt and pepper, admittedly. Lesson learned. It's a sort of end to the summer fishing. That's why I thought I'd have a bit of a celebration. And the weather's due to change. So it's just nice. Kick back, relax. If I catch, I catch. If I don't, I don't. It's not, it's not an epic. So you can see down there, halfway through eating, off goes the catfish rod. So I've got a catfish hooked up here, 100%. I really don't pick my other line up. The moment he's over the top of it there, I've got the other one straight out. I don't feel a very big fish. 
but you never know till they come in close. Come on, fish. Tea's getting cold. Wanna take this one, mate? <laughs> you just pull that bobbin off because it might jam in the rings. How does it come off? Yeah, just pull it in two parts. Is there a washing up? Actually, you've got to drop it on the floor. Just check the drag because it might be a bit. I don't know if it's on bait run, it might just give it a turn the hand. Well, yeah, I think you're on. We've actually got two catfish hooked up here, people. And my tea's still getting cold. I am not really do the doubles on a carp. I don't know what I'm going to do. Doubles on the catfish. I think it's the first. I think I did it with Josh last year once. Oh, what is this? A catfish on it? It's a cat, yeah. Jeez. It's quite different to the carp, don't they? Oh, yeah. A stronger than a carp, yeah. The tweezers. You okay with that one? Yeah, yeah. You you sort the drag out. You know, it's a uh, it's twenty pound line, so it should be all right. So we go. People, there's a nice catfish there. Just wanted to have a gentleman was standing nearby. It's like a number 49 bus, nothing happens and then two come along at once. Yeah, mate, do you want to take this? No, you work you work away off doing the filming to be honest. Did we get him in first? Yeah exactly. Oh he's still a way out there, yeah. Any, any big carp out have you, you know, over the years or are you fishing regular? Uh, I'll bring my boys down here. I took them over to Lake 2 the other day. Just had a couple of little ones. Just, they're only seven and eight, so I'm just getting them used to fishing. I'll they get them it. into it, yeah. But no, I haven't had uh, much big ones out of here, to be fair. There's been one now, I've been trying to catch it on a float, but it's they're just like nosing the bait at the moment. It's really sort of weird. That's my bit of line I lost up there. I'm going to oh, yeah. that out if I can, yeah. We all do it, mate. Accurate casting. Well, there's a bunch of others up there, so I mean, good. <laughs> I've got my float back. <laughs> That's about all. It's coming. Yeah, if you don't want to do it, I just get angles. I couldn't possibly get on my own. In. How much do you reckon he weighs? Here we go, 12s with really? you, 10s. He's only just hooked, look there. Yes, look, it's about three feet long, isn't he? I've got my grub to, 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 to eat and I'd have to say cheers. Bit noisy on a flight path, that's the reason I don't want to do it all night. Huh? Well, I'm going to stay till it's dark, guys, because I've got a secret weapon I want to try out there. I have no idea where it's going to work. Um, yeah, so um, I'm going to I'm going to tough it out and uh, fish into the dark, and then basically I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to try light sticks on the bait, which is catfish have got small eyes. Luckily, I don't think the guys saw my secret catfish bait. It came off in the water, so they're safe. They're alive. I won't have to eradicate them. Mm. People, I have, I believe, the entire lake to myself. Now, 
That's what I'm talking now. You can actually night fish it if you want. I, indeed, I was going to night fish it. See, I'm fairly superstitious. No, I'm very superstitious. So I only moved my chair sideways to the swim or to the rods to do the cooking down here, you see. And the umbrellas to keep the wind off and for the wind mic as well and wind in the mic. Because now, with a double strike of catfish and we get both of them, I'm leaving my chair this way. You might see in future films, I fish every single film with a chair sideways and obviously I have a bad neck because I'll be like, oh, all the time. Where's the float? Where's the float? Where's the ledger? I'll be like that. You never know, honestly. I'm not moving it tonight because it's, I might move it 45 degrees. So that's half good luck and maybe half bad luck being near the cooking. I've got a couple of pools, different pools as well. I'll chuck some bread out for the carp, see if they come back up again, but it's a lovely, beautiful still evening. The wind has gone down now, I have to say. I cannot grumble. Look, there's even fish down there. I've got a feeling they're carp, but they're fit. They look like two pound carp, but trust me, they ain't. There's some decent carp in there. I think there might be a sort of 12, 15 pounder in there somewhere, but they're just cruising. There's a V, a wake there, you might see it. It looks like a rud. No, it's a carp, trust me. This one is a catfish, it's not a carp. I think the other rod's got mullered. <laughs> I'll leave that one in because you never know. Two trains do come along at the same time. We've seen that just now. This one's on the right side, he's on the left hand side of the other rod. Come on, Mr. Fish. So weak these catfish. <laughs> I love them, they pull a carp inside out. Also, I wonder how old they live. Does anybody know how old catfish live? All sort of random questions while I'm uh, fighting the fish pop into my head. I wonder how old catfish live. I don't think there's any other people making films like me on my own. Rod in one hand, camera in the other, still talking, still catching the fish. Billy basics, basic rigs, a hook, a secret bait and a washing up bottle top for a bite indicator. They are some serious string pullers guys. Look at that, look, still going. Still going. Batteries down on this thirty per cent. He's coming slowly. Come on. Peg number seven. Get in. Yes. That's a really dark. Look at the markings on that one. Look at that. Very, very blacks and greys. Just hooked. Oh shit. Here we go. We're on again. Oh, Jesus Christ. 
What is this bait I'm using? Oh god. Camera in the mouth again, right. I've got to get this chap back. Oh. Fish about 12. I got him back, now I'll try on this one. Goodness me. What a place. I think I threw some bread in. I think I was messing around with those carp. Or I could have been going for the real McCoy. I'm going to click off till I get this fish in, guys. And I'm going to put my light rig on. I think this is a bigger fish. Slightly, because this is a much heavier rod. And he's, he's holding it over, look. He's actually pinching a bit of line off me. I've got him halfway in and he's just stopped. You can tell by the swirl on the top. It's a good fish. The wrist is wearing out now. I haven't got my wrist strap on. Josh did tell me, he said, you won't want to fish all night, Graham. <laughs> he said, you'll be packing up at 12 o'clock, pleading to go to sleep in the bivvy. God, this fish is going. This is my main carp rod. It takes a bit of bending, or to hold a bend in it. Got to be a bigger fish, this one. Slightly bigger. Let's have a look at him. Oh. Oh, I've got to get the hook out. Oh, lovely. Where's that guy who was helping me last time? Where's he gone? That's the good, best of barbless hooks. These ones are those grips hooks, by the way, guys. Barbers grips, and they're very sharp. I like them. <clears throat> Come on. Come and see Uncle Graham. There we go. There we go. Yeah, he's a bit bigger, that one. Definitely. Good one. <coughs> 14, 16 pounds, something like that. He might be 18, that one. Good big catfish. There he goes. I don't want to go in with him. Go on. It's an epic, it's not even dark yet. Do I dare put my light stick on? People are stupid. Oh, I can't even get the second rod out after those other other double take. I'm just trying to change to. Uh, I thought the hook point was a bit blunt. I thought I'll look in the tackle bag, see if I've got another hook, another trace made up, which I'm pretty sure I have. But off it goes again. Ridiculous. I mean, anybody who wants to get their first catfish, it's not a giant catfish place, you're not going to get 100 pounders here. But by golly, they do give you a scrap. And it really, it doesn't matter where you go, I'm just throwing way out in the middle. I've caught them around the edges before. Even this is a bit manic. Try and get you a bit closer, but that's ridiculous filming on my own. I've got the whole lake to myself now. But 
to tell you people about. Put my chair at 45 degrees, didn't I? <laughs> Good luck. You never get an easy catfish. A bit like barbel, really. It's never an easy one. I think right now. Wow, that's another nice fish. Are you kidding me? It's a good double figure fish, you know, I should be weighing these. Old still. Oh my god, they are slippery. There we go. There go the net, mate. Why me? Oh god. Yeah. Look at that one. <laughs> what a trip. And I'm running out of red wine as well. <laughs> 14, 16, 18, I don't know. They're all fish to me. I'm going way back. Oh. Oh, I'm in a right state. I've got to get a bait out. It's actually stupid people. I'm trying to bait up the second rod. I can't get two rods in the water. Straight to the butt ring. Smaller fish, this one. Feel, feels a smaller one. <laughs> I want to see the bend in the rod, though. Did you get this with the other fishing programs? Some old man of 71, all on his own, making fishing films, wheeling them in. Don't get me wrong, I have the blanks, the same as the other people. Smaller fish, I'll take it. The actress said to the bishop, size is irrelevant. Yeah. So weak if I'll get it in there. Easy. Looking about six, that's the smallest one. The others have been real good fish. I'm joking, not it's madness. I just cast out, it's took me on the drop. Didn't even hit the bottom, I had to rob in my hand. This is madness. There's nobody fishing here. That's ridiculous. I'll have to get the, uh, hopefully get something at this, people. I can't use the GoPro anymore because it's rubbish at night. But I have got a floodlight for that, but it's, it's like, it doesn't look with this camera, but it's, well, I've got the headlight on, that's why I can't uh, see too much. It is, in fact, pretty dark. That's unbelievable. I didn't even get to pull the bobbin down. I was holding the rod, sinking the line, and I thought, whoosh, what's that? It's like a pipe take. That bait I got is some sort of bait. And they're out feeding, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. Probably the same as the last one. We're going to get two rods in the water. We're going to have enough bait.
touch bigger than the last one. I'm always frightened to cast out now. Well guys, it is dark dark now. I've got a camera floodlight on. Can't use a small camera. Just got whatever I've got left on the big camera. Can't even see what it says. Is that guy at the back? Is that Smith? What the hell is he doing up at this time of night? Get to bed, boy. Got homework in the morning. I hope it's done on my desk. Maths and geography. Now, I can't spell geography, but that doesn't matter. The trouble is, I want to try this light sticks. It's now dark enough, but <laughs> I'm frightened I might not get another take. Should I do it or not? I think I've got to. I think I've got to try it. So I'm going to dig out a couple of light sticks, they're only small, and see if we get a take. I have got, I don't know if you've seen these things before, somebody sent them to me. One of my friends, one of the few friends. One, one of two, maybe, yeah, two, two or three. Jerry, I think, sent me these. Uh, when you cast them out, apparently they make contact with the water, they light up. Well, I figure, because I'm not catching on the waggler now, only that one cup when I early on in the daylight then there's no point using this now because I want to really try the I can't do everything I'd have to bring in the catfish rod and put out the waggler with a different float rig it all up I've got the waggler there obviously it's been so manic on the catfish I haven't bothered changing it over I've got to untackle that and pack it away but I'm going to save that for another trip because it's still in the autumn time as well it can be very good for floater fishing off the top you know before the weather gets really cold uh, but I'm going to dig out a couple of light sticks in this five in this pack. It says five. Again, I think they're mics, I don't know. They're very, very small, but that's all we need. Yeah, it feels like there's five. Now, I don't know when you break the seal of these. Short. <coughs> Sorry about it. Oh, totally off some fishing show. Don't do any. Don't need to do any fake takes, do we? So mist is giving out. I think it's number nine. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Anyway, I'll get back to you. I'll try to get this fish in. It's not a big fish. I can feel five, six pounder. It's still a catfish, though. And I will. Um... Oh no, 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 no. Oh, he's come off. There you go. It's probably a blessing in disguise. Well, that means that means the other one is going to go, and it's going, it's going. Spin it round. That was not my line, I don't think there. Guys, I think that was a separate take. I think that was a separate take. That one. I'll soon find out when I go to wind this one in. No, I'm actually in, so that was a separate take. So now I am seriously running out of bait. Oh, I'm exhausted. I've taken this opportunity <clears throat> of losing that fish to show you. That's what I've done, let's bring it up to the camera. I put a light stick above the trace with a rubber float, you know, a float rubber there and there. I've no idea whether it'll hold. Hopefully it will. And then the bait, which you won't see, <laughs> below so there you go that's um, like a light stick basically it's a chemical light stick um, I'm gonna call it a glass file inside a plastic file two different chemicals people haven't seen them before some people call them star lights it's a fairly modern one we would call them these were silene light sticks years ago made by the American cyanamide company I don't know what these ones are similar so two chemicals when you bend them they crack the two chemicals mix and make a light really good on the float the rod top for bite indication, um, we're using beach fishing, you can put them on your lead as well, but I don't know for catfish, catfish got tiny little eyes, they might be, ah, put that light out, they might be like that, mightn't they? I don't know, but I'm going to throw it out, and I feel I've got to do it on the other rod as well, what do you think, I've got to do it, if, even if I blank, <laughs> well I can't blank, I've got about nine catfish and a carp, but you know what I'm saying, if I catch nothing in the next hour or so, we know that they don't like light. That's weird, it's like a shooting star going through the air. 
Don't worry, that's me guys, that's me banging the rods in the dark. And I just lost one on the Silium, on this uh, starlight there. I just lost one, so I'm going to throw it out again. And there's a huge number of fish busting on the surface. You might hear them in the background. Make a sort of popping sound. Purposely left the camera running in case you can. I'll point it towards the lake, and you might hear what they're doing is opening their mouths. They're coming up under the surface, opening their mouths really fast, making that popping sound and sucking off small fry off the surface. It's just like tarpon fishing. Yeah, maybe you heard that one. You might even see the light stick coming in there. I'll cut out just before my bait comes up. Ordinarily, I would be fishing by the rods. I wouldn't have them um, on the bait runner. I'd just be fishing, you know, locked up solid. As that bobbing goes off, I strike them. But because I'm messing around cooking and filming and doing other stuff, I feel it's safer to put them on the bait runner um, rather than lose a rod. So the lights don't put them off because I just lost one. I'm a bit keen on the strike, to be honest. No, 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 no. Missed him again, I missed him again. It's ridiculous. That's on the light stick. Hey, wait, that's two I've missed on the light stick. Because they're busting on these small fish. Are they hitting the light stick? All this and much more in the next episode. I don't know, maybe maybe guys, what do you think? Are they hitting the light stick? Should I try that float? You know, with the uh, light in it. Get this out again. Wow. All those busts are not carp, they are catfish. Yeah, guys, I'm on. I am absolutely on. Genuine on the light stick. There's pops you in the background. They're fish like this, they come up and they're going like this, right on the surface. Probably a little two inch fry, roach fry, something like that, they're nailing. But there's a lot of catfish busting. Ooh. Don't need the other one going off, do I? Here's your third time with a double hookup. Here comes the night stick. You can see what your fish are, guys. You'll see where the fish is when the light stick comes up there. Second light stick has gone off. 
way on the surface. I can hear him splash and I can see the light stick in, in the air. So he's right on the surface. Let's pull that down, you won't see or not a lot, but trust me, I think this is number 10. See what my arms are going to pay me a price tomorrow. If I bring this down, you'll see that stick coming through the water. Hopefully. There's so many catfish kicking off here. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. There, no secret bait, so I can show you. Look, there's the there's the light stick. Oh. If you remember, I did say that I've not night fished here before. <laughs> it's probably just as well. There's too many fish. Oh. Look at them, it's ridiculous. I don't know what to say. Do you know what I think Josh was right? He said, Graham, you'd be lucky to make it till midnight, mate. He said, then you'll want to crawl into the bivvy and just go to sleep. I don't know what the time is. It can't be much after half past ten. That is crazy. Surely it can't go like this all night. I mean, even the type of fish in the Florida Keys doesn't go all night. It goes on the tide when they go busting on the surface like this. I've never heard this before, I'll be perfectly honest, but then I've never night fished here. Just so many fish. These things work for sure. All right, guys, I'm here. It's there. I'm going to turn the light off. What I've done is I've thrown some breading close down the margins, and I reckon the little fry will come up, and then you might actually hear um, uh, the catfish come up and it's, you know, suck these fry down. I'm calling them fry, they might be two inch fish. But obviously, I'll keep my light down because it's that close. It has slowed. And we come around here. The absolute manic bite, I mean, it, it's definitely slow. That first hour of darkness was so like the Florida Keys, it was unbelievable. Ebb tide, channel two, no moon, bit of a breeze, live mullet, pinfish or crab, boom. It was just unbelievable that was. Now, over there, I keep banging on about the Florida Keys, it's so similar, it's a predator feeding frenzy. And that's exactly what that was for like, close to 45 minutes I guess maybe maybe an hour is they get something called it's a green worm it's a worm hatch that they get in the Florida Keys and these worms come through and they're the same color as those light sticks like green and they drift down the current and the top and just get preoccupied on them and just wow I've had some fantastic nights fishing you still fish live bait <coughs> Jesus not again please give me a break I'll talk to you here as well you might even see this if it goes Definitely bites. Yeah, the tarpon actually feed on these, but they don't feed on these worms all night long. It's just subject to the tide going in and out. And the worms, I guess, must hatch on the flats in the back of the Florida Keys. I've been there many times, I've had many tarpon trips. Going out on my own, in a boat, in a storm, at night, pitch dark, just take the Q-beam, some live baits, and the best I did was three tarpon. Uh, to about 130 pounds on my own in the boat. Now you can't put me in the boat now, obviously it's all rules have changed, but back then I used to be manic for it, I couldn't get enough of it, that tarp and fishing at night. This is very, very similar. Gets my adrenaline going to be honest. I don't understand where you can night fish here, there's not other anglers here. But it has gone off, it has just gone down. Oh, having said that, there we go, there we go. He hadn't picked it up totally. There's the other one. Look, 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 look. Now it's a big bait, it's a big bait. 
Oh, and the other one's going to well, oh no. I'll wait till they hold. I'm on. Oh, to camera now. Oh my god. You know the same with me, people. Yeah, that's right. There's anglers and there's danglers. Number 12. Haven't got him yet. I'm going to turn this round. Probably blinding everybody in the houses there. And don't forget, there's still a little beep going on with that other one. This one is the left hand right, so I might be able to keep it left. That was a classic. My God. Now, what I was thinking is that I might actually not get the takes on the bottom because the fish were up in the top of the water busting on all those fry. Um, that didn't transpire, I still got fish. But I'm now wondering, because he's gone off the, off the boil, busting on those fry on the top, they've gone off a bit, maybe they start sinking down the catfish and hunting across the bottom and I'm like, huh, can't catch any more than I'm catching at the moment. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. This is my main carp, my guys. You can't see it in this dark, but it's whacked over. He's going. He's going to go over the other line, so I'm going to... Is over or under? It's about time I had a cluster. But there you go. I'm going to keep the rod low. No, he's picked the other line up. I'm going to spin this around and see where I'm at. I think he's going right hand side. What you're going to do is try and get me in the roots up under these trees. That's the benefit actually is I can see where the line is with this light stick. Now he's going for the trees. Funny seeing the stick go through the water. <laughs> try and bring him under this rod, and I can let him be on the side. Bit of a risk, but I'll try it. Yeah, maybe you can see the light stick there. I don't know. It's going on the roots here. Obviously not bothered and may even be attracted by the light sticks. Catfish anglers, take note. Oh god, I'm just missed a Kennedy. Yet another double figure fish. And I've fished it up, I've already taken it out, but I have taken the rig out of this one. Somebody else is rigging there, an enormous rig. Let's get this hook out. That's a good fish, yeah. Gonna go 14, 16, I'm guessing. It is. Wow. It is. Well, you can just take my word for it. It's 20. 
a 20 pounds and 8 ounces. I thought it was a big one, so I made me weigh it. Wow, that's a beaut. I don't weigh a lot of my fish, or perhaps I should do. Look at that one. That's number 15. I just the most phenomenal catfishing I think I've had. In depth we go, buddy. I just had number 16, guys. Fingers are ragged. Anyhow, one, I can't remember if it was a 20 pound or another one. I should have got another guy's rig out of it. He must be going for taupe. It's a hair rig. Can you see that? It's a hair there. It looks like he's... How is it wrapped around? He's wrapped the line around and around and around. I took this out of the catfish. It is a truly monster hook. Now, I know they do sell alleged catfish hooks. I'm going to show you what I'm using. You don't need a monster hook, guys. I mean, if you're going for... When we went to... We went to Cass Bay, we did a DVD, I don't know, some of you have got one, probably seen it. We had them to 180 pounds, so we know what a big catfish looks like. That's the hook size this guy was using. Are you going to see in there the hook size I'm using? I'm not plugging it there, I'll even cover it up for you. It's one of those grips ones, but look, I'm just using whatever that is, a size 4, and this is a size 163. I use that for small blue sharks, taupe and stuff like that. So I'm just saying, you know, obviously you have to equate it to the size of bait you're using. I don't know what this gentleman is using, half of a buzzard or a chicken, I don't know. Uh, big length of braid, no problem. Looks like a swivel there. A double swivel, to a link, tiny small link swivel. I wouldn't do that link swivel, that, that one there. Yeah, I don't like the idea of that, because that could, that could pop off. Can you see that there's a link there? for taking it off for changing it. Well, there shouldn't be any need to change it because you're hopefully not going to hook anything deep. I haven't hooked anything deep. And that's with a small hook. So I just tie straight under that. This is all fine, the braid and everything like that looks okay, but what a monster hook. The other thing is, because I've got to pack up soon because I'm getting tired, with midnight on. Josh is right, you can't go much past midnight. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I'm going to keep that for tote because that's a pretty good hook. It's with those light sticks, these things. I can't even find them now. Starlights, whatever you want to call them. I always call them starlight. It's different makes. Because they're liquid, although I've only had a few hours out of these, they're still bright. I can use them again, but you've got to put them in the freezer. And they will last in the freezer, because obviously it freezes the liquid. However, I'll give you a tip. I've used these before when I've been marlin fishing, or we go sword fishing, night shark fishing, that stuff. They've been they're old school, but I've had 40 years ago I was using them. Um, when you get them, in hot tropical countries, they will be very bright, but they won't last as long. In cold water, let's say, from the UK... That's me, that's me, that's me. We're on. Sorry to uh, get interrupted, like I'll tell you what, I'll do it, I'll do it down now, I'll get it Getting all very nonchalant now. Let's just do it from down here, Graham, this is very nonchalant now, so I think that is... No, it's still the right hand rod that's going off. Um, as I was saying, hot countries, they don't last as long, but they are brighter. Cold countries, I'm going to say for us, in colder water, they last bright for longer, but they won't be as bright, if that makes sense. You know, they're, they're gradually toned down in the colder weather. I, I know it sounds, I don't mean to be blase, I really, really don't. But this is number 17. This is 17, 17th catfish. It's 7 o'clock this evening, and it's, it's just about 11 o'clock at night. That's crackers. Absolutely. Even I'd say, you know, that is mental. Just ridiculous fishing. But I, that didn't sound ridiculous. I think I knocked it into bait runner. After this one I probably have one more cast and pack up guys. It risks to go.
nearly done, people. That's me. Yeah. You know it's not fake because I turned the camera right round there. And he's on. <laughs> I love it. Keep me bobbing on. Good old washing up top. Doesn't work, does it? Like number 18. couldn't possibly catch all these fish if I wasn't wearing all this camouflage green. <laughs> no. Quite handy seeing this light come through the water guys. I don't know if I can get this as well for you, fight fish and film and do pyrotechnics. Let me try it. It's right Come on, slow up. Got him. Lock that drag up. I've got to get home. Oh, he's not having it, he's not having it. That noise means I'm trying to pack up. I put the rod pop on my foot. Number 21's hooked up. There's a little bit big fish this one too. I've got to go, it's midnight, I've got to get home. It's just ridiculous. This is, I'm down to my last two baits. I think it's a bit bigger fish. They're still crashing around out there, it's ridiculous. All I can see are little dimples all over the surface where there must be hundreds if not thousands of fry just under the surface. And the catfish are coming up underneath them, <coughs> like this, boom. Pretty exciting stuff, I have to say. I personally have never seen it before. The big feeding frenzy, big feeding frenzy. Well, it can't last all night, every day, week in, week out, can it? Surely. There'll be no, there'll be no little fish left. I feel like I should have a, a shoulder harness and a fighting belt now, because I've got the butt against my foot. Oh, he's off. He's pinged off. Oh, it's almost a relief. It's almost a relief. Just pinged off. Well, guys, all I can say is... Thanks for sticking with us, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. This was one of the most epic I've ever had. It is my biggest catfish catch in well, 6 o'clock. Well, that time I really got the catfish going, 7 o'clock I think it was. 4 or 5 hours, 20 odd catfish, it's just lunacy. Is it my bait? I have to say yes, but they're on the feed. The old saying is, be there when they bite. I hope to be next time, and I hope you'll join me. Oh, the joints are going.